what's going on everybody my name is Isaac Hongos I'm a photographer and web video producer in this podcast let's talk about HQ2 by Amazon Stan Lee and Apple's ban on third-party uh, manufacturers and refurbishment uh, teaming up with Apple and Amazon so first and foremost this is actually a respond podcast to Philip DeFranco's question about these large companies coming into an area and sort of the effects and I'm talking as someone that lives in Silicon Valley where there's not just one massive company, but a whole bunch of companies. However, I think this perspective is different because I feel like if Amazon does come into these two areas that they've selected, they will have a giant monopoly, um, something sort of different than what happens in Silicon Valley. So first and foremost, before I start this podcast, uh, I kind of want to give some context about what's happening. So Amazon, you know, they massive corporation, they decided to open up a contest for their new HQ2 and they told cities like what can you offer us in order to bring sort of this massive you know campus onto your city and what Amazon promised a city would be the following and I'm quoting this I'm going to be quoting from the Atlantic Derek Thompson's article and from an NPR article by Alina Sel you sell so sorry I have a very difficult name as well so I know I'm really misspelling it so if I tweet at you and I'm saying it wrong please teach me how to pronounce it so uh, the first article is from the Atlantic which is quote the prize 50k employees in the glory of having an international tech giant the cost just several billion dollars in tech incentives in a potential faceless face lift to the host city and quote so this also follows a with uh, the NPR article uh, by Alina that says, quote, the biggest draw of Amazon's HQ two bidding process, which was a much coveted promise of 50K jobs tattered to to pay six figure salaries. Yet Amazon's move would bring in these well-paying jobs to areas where six figure salaries are not unusual. The latest average wage is already around 100K a year in Arlington, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The average weight of Manhattan is 160k a year, although the average weight in Queens is just under 55k a year. So you should know that the two winning cities, which was super anticlimactic, were Crystal City and Long Island, New York. Both of them, I believe, are in the East Coast. And I'm going to follow up with some context regarding tax breaks and tax incentives, because when you're giving a tax incentive to a company, this money doesn't essentially come out of thin air and this is summarized well with Derek Thompson's uh, article piece that says quote every year American cities and, and states spend up to 90 billion in tax breaks and cash grants to urge companies to move among states that's more than the federal government spends on housing education or infrastructure and since these cities and states can't print money or run steep deficits these deals take scary resources from everything from local from everything local governments would otherwise pay such as schools roads police and prison hold on i gotta i gotta check the camera to make sure that's running because i'm just tripping the audio so sort of you have this context of where this money is coming from Uh, just because you have tax incentive uh when you're giving tax incentives you're taking money from somewhere else that it could potentially be used for and then there um and then sort of more context and this quoted from alina's article Quote, by one conversation estimate, cities and states give away more than 70 billion uh, every year in foregoing taxes and other companies, um, in foregoing taxes and other concessions to companies for the prospect of new jobs or even to keep existing ones, end quote. And I'll, I'll uh, link the articles, both articles underneath the tweet about this. So you might, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, it's, it's really great that companies are bringing in, you know, sort of more jobs, more housing more of this, more of that, stimulating an economy. However, let's look at some of the results that were given by, um, by Nathan Jensen, and this is again from The Atlantic, which, was, which quotes, quote, an, economic, an economist, econ- I can't say, economist, uh, economist uh, Nathan Jensen at Georgetown University found that these incentives have no dis- this incredible impact on firm expansion measured by job creation, end quote. I really got to get better at quoting, but it's I'm, I'm kind of reading it to you. Um, and sort of another example used was, quote, several years ago, 
Kansas lured AMC Entertainment with tens of millions of dollars in incentives. The Missouri responded. Then Missouri responded by stealing Applebee's headquarters from Kansas with another incentive package. End quote. So essentially, this is so. This is basically cities fighting for these massive tech giants and. You know, this is kind of where my, my opinion is coming in. I've Hopefully you've gathered enough context and kind of maybe read the articles because I linked them down below about this. So it's, it's Amazon. We all know who Amazon is, what they do. We probably use their services and what they did. And Jeff Bezos, kind of my personal opinion on him, I think he's a mastermind when it comes to business, but he's a mastermind when it comes to patience as well. Sort of giving you the context he basically let Amazon bleed money to allow, to make sure that he could dominate the book space, like bookstores and all that stuff. And we all fell for it. And that's why so many bookstores are basically out of business. <clears throat> Hold on, let me, let me drink some water. And I'm gonna be honest, the guy is smart. He knows what he's doing. And, yikes. Yeah. Dry, dry throat, <clears throat> and he knows what he's doing. He's no, he's no dingus. He's patient. He articulates everything really well. He's a mastermind, and Amazon is a trillion-dollar company. You know, before they even announced this last year, they weren't a trillion-dollar company, but they were worth billions and billions of dollars. So, to me, giving a tax incentive to these massive companies just makes absolute no sense. And here's kind of where my personal experience comes from with Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley isn't run by solely one tech giant. It's run by multiple tech giants. So the space can never truly be dominated by one person, by, by one company. And if I'm getting it right, Long Islands and Crystal Cities are, obviously I wasn't taught geography in class. So Long Island, I mean, Crystal City, uh, from what I read is a small suburban area. San Jose and uh, the heart of Silicon Valley is obviously not a suburb, we're a city. Um, but from what I'm seeing from San Francisco to Oakland, to Berkeley to Redwood to Mountain View to Palo Alto is the gentrification of these, of these big companies coming in, steeping up the prices. And I don't think that these governors who were giving these incentives to look cool in front of the younger generation thought about this through. Silicon Valley has a very unique problem because it's only happening here. There's no other city where tax rent and everything is going up so high. Obviously, it feels like that. And, it, and to some extent, it is because there's nobody that houses this, this many tech giants in one place. If you look at Seattle, they have a problem with, with rent and cars and sort of everything in between. It's kind of like the second Silicon Valley right now. And to me, I think that having another HQ and splitting it among among two cities, while that might be great for jobs, we also have to think of the quality of the jobs. It's not low skill, like your, I'm not saying teachers are low skill, sorry, that came to mind, like low skill jobs. The, these are gonna be high skill engineer, mechanical engineers, software developers, programmers, who are gonna be making these six figures, who are gonna be making this amount of money. Are they gonna stimulate the economy? There's another report that says that there was, it was, it was in the, it was in the video. Um, sort of, let me, let me play it back. Let me, cause this is a podcast. So you are able to hopefully hear what I'm saying. So. Sorry, I, I'm skipping around the video. So. Yeah. Right here. And it's been pointed out that sometimes the companies just don't hold up their end of the bargain. People pointing to situations like when Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker offered Chinese manufacturing company Foxconn more than $3 billion to create 13,000 jobs. But now, reportedly, the company is only planning on creating a quarter of those jobs, yet the subsidies have grown to over $4 billion. However, on the So, you're giving companies a tax incentive with large tech companies promising, quote-unquote, promising that they will create these jobs. From the examples that we see in the past, these large companies don't really have to hold up their end of the bargain because there's very little control between this new tech sector that has emerged within the last 10 years to keep up their end of the bargain. So I think there should be a pre preliminary um, 
period before you give them these giant tax evasion. And I've talked about this with Google coming into San Jose, an area that's already very expensive million dollar homes and then promising these jobs. Again, these aren't jobs for people who already own homes. This is, look, I'm young, I want a job, I'm, I'm unemployed, but it, doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. You're not catering to the older generation. I get it, the older generation gives us a bunch of shit and they're all like, you're lazy millennials and all that. And, but at some point we realize that they're the ones that are making the more money. It's not just it's not just older people, but the people that are also living paycheck to paycheck. So to me, there's there's no reason that we should be giving Amazon, one of the biggest tech giants, who makes the most amount of money, who hosts millions of dollars in uh, in web services, more tax incentives. Again, Jeff Bezos is a freaking mastermind, and I applaud him for making you know the standard the standard. $15 for his company. However, again, it could all just be a ploy. $15 to him times a billion, million, you know, employees is probably nothing. He's really, really smart. And sometimes, to be honest, he, I feel like he could kill me, to be honest, if he really wanted to. But I'm, I'm nobody right now. So uh, I'm nobody in the tech sector, right? So I'm just saying, there's got to be preliminary areas where at least this, this so-called 50k jobs, or I don't know how much they're going to split in between these two cities now, are they promising 50k jobs between, the, between these jobs, uh, between these two cities? Is it 50k per city now? Is it 50k solely? So that means they're only going to generate 2,500 2, jobs per city? you give them a large you know billion dollar tax incentive what are you taking away from the communities so to me it doesn't seem right um i think this was a bad move and to the governors that didn't think ahead to the representatives that didn't think ahead it just seems kind of selfish and like obviously you're a politician so you're supposed to want people to like you but at some point you got to make the right decision and the tech space is so new that it doesn't make sense but can we learn from foxcom and realize that it's gonna take years. So can we give them a trial? Because using Jeff Bezos' tactics, they're willing to bleed money and I can see it and it's even in his script. Patience is the key. But to him, bleeding money is the key. And, and you know, that's all I have to say. And someone that lives in the Silicon Valley, I know that most of these companies don't hold up their end of the bargain. They're not gonna do anything because they know they have the power. They have the information and information is now the new gold. This is there. This is the second gold rush, where it's not more physical, but it's more, ta it's intangible. It's information, and Amazon, we know knows that we have a lot of information on these governors, and these consumers, and you know, I just we didn't think long term ahead. So, if any governor or government representative hears this, think ahead. You're, and the only thing that I can think of is you know, Mark Zuckerberg going against, you know, the, the Senate who didn't know how to change anything in, be in their settings because every question they asked in the setting about uh, Facebook privacy was all in the settings. So it's kind of us, up to us young people as well to speak about, against these like tech giants who we know uh, are selling our information. Oh my God, I just almost spilled my water. Um, but that's kind of it. And I just think it was a bad move wasn't thought out ahead preliminary areas where you at least reach over 70 percent because that's a c in freaking america right c you you know 50k what's with 50k 35 so you create those 35 k's and they can't just be high skilled jobs they got to be like lower end jobs and they have to come in with benefits salaries i mean you know janitors they deserve salaries i feel like they kind of do um everybody has a right to a living wage in my opinion and you know, Jeff Bezos, scary, please do not hire a hitman to kill me. Uh, but that's just kind of my opinion on that. Um, and we're still recording. Um, so let's talk, let's talk about Stan Lee, which, is, which happened yesterday. I didn't really want to get on it because you know, Stan Lee is probably you know, a legendary man, created a lot of my childhood. And um, just a sad day, you know? 
just that day yesterday where you, th you don't think someone like that can die. They, they feel invincible at some point. But it was a, a, a tragic day. Um, I'm, I always look forward to Marvel movies and what they bring and where your imagination can take you. So um, rest in peace to a legend. Oh, man, how do you transition from that? Man, sad day, sad day. Um, so we're, we're also kind of going to talk about Apple and Amazon. See, I'm, I'm just all over Amazon right now because it feels like they're going to become a monopoly. And monopolies aren't good. If you've ever played the game Monopoly, what is the purpose of the entire game? To dominate every single individual so they pay you. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it here. And then I'm going to start recording again because I don't want it to freeze. So kind of continuing on regarding Apple and Amazon. This is going to be a lot quicker because I dedicated an entire video to Apple and Amazon teaming up regarding these refurbished products that are made, that are, you know, fixed up for, by like other repair shops and then sold. So if you go back, uh, you know, check out my YouTube, I talk about Apple and Amazon, how this is pretty freaking scary because they're two tech giants teaming up to say, yo, like, don't allow these smaller companies to put their stuff on Amazon and sell it. And, and sell it. And I think a lot of this has to do with the environment, people, consumers, and, you know, Apple's essentially trying to basically squeeze every penny out of the life force of their products. You know, I'm all for quality control and bringing a good product. And, you know, and Amazon already has this, as I said, it is kind of like a, a faster, um, less detail oriented um, protocol, protocol, um, uh, like less detailed version of what the video was about, which was that they're basically tech giants that are trying to squeeze everything out of there. But not, not only that, they're trying to control what other people are selling. And Amazon already has, you know, Amazon does a pretty great job when you buy something and it doesn't work, they automatically refund you. Um, as you know, as long as you have proper evidence, it's not like you buy something, you break it, and then you return it. Um, and I think that's one of Amazon's really big strengths. Like you're able to leave credible reviews for this, and to some extent, Apple trying to control this. We've already seen that they fail. Um, you know, one of the best examples probably is their throttling of iPhones, which if you know old people, you know I'm not. <laughs> You know, old people, if you think something's slow, you're obviously going to throw it away. And I don't think most people know this, but you're not supposed to throw away, like, your iPhone into the recycling bin, into, like, the recycling bin that you get in, like, outside of your house, right? You're supposed to go to, like, an electronic shop and then throw it away properly because it just, like, those batteries take trillions of years to, like, deform, right? So, we already see this with the throttling. There was an Air 53 that happened as well where your fingerprint ID, your touch ID wouldn't work. And then there was a screen where a third party screen, you would not be able to use it unless it was Apple specific. All this created junk, junk in the trunk, drunk on like trunk, ju I mean junk um, for the planet. And this was done by Apple. Like someone at Apple is like, yo, what do people break the most? Screens, let's make them unusable when they're made by a third party. And obviously that is not a smart move, not good for the environment. And, you know, critics are saying also this, um, that it is because Apple wants to, you know, take, take control of the quality of the refurbished product that these individuals are buying from these stores, which I guess kind of makes sense. Um, I'm always pretty sketched out when I buy something on the internet, especially something like an Apple product, because there's so many people that are try, trying to probably replicate it, right? But also, if you look into like a video by Louise Rosman, um, all this is in video. I just made the end segment about the video because I want you to check it out. It's gotten 20 views. Um, you know, they didn't do a proper job. Again, if you look at their, at their work, it's not the best. And this Louise Rosman guy has been doing this for 15 years, so I'm pretty sure he has some knowledge of it. And their latest product, the Apple AirPods, not that great of environmental piece. Um, yeah, the iPad Pro, 100% aluminum, your spaceship, 100% renewable energy, but you gotta take bigger steps. 
And sort of my overall conclusion is that we as consumers have to think about the cycle of our stuff, not as you buy, you, you throw it away or you recycle it, but instead, especially with these pieces of technology where, you know, batteries, batteries, you know, the electronics, the, all these parts that sometimes, sometimes take a very long time to sort of decompose have to be thought of in the way of reduce, reuse, repair, refurbish, and then it doesn't rhyme because there's no R, but give it to someone else, someone that uses the technology. I still use a freaking iPhone 6. And that's because it still works. Apple does have quality. That's all we know, except for the MacBook Pros. And I talk about this too, where they're charging an extreme amount. So it's about also protecting those small repair shops who are just trying to make a living and taking some weight off of Apple's shoulders because we see that they're not doing a good job in the past and now. Yeah, the iPad Pro, nice, new, whatever but based on the past, they're not doing a very good job. So I just suggest you check that out. Suggest you check out the video. I worked really hard on it. I did all the research and um, let me know what you think because I am an Apple fanboy, but their wall garden is getting to be way too much. Like, and I say this in the video, only idiots want to build walls. So kind of take, take a crack at it. And I hope this was entertaining. Hopefully the quality of, of the audio is a lot better. So, um, yeah, check that out. And, yeah, that's it. Uh, you can tweet at me. Um, check out the YouTube. And let me know. Let's have a discussion. And Philip DeFranco, if you are listening to this, it would be great if you like it. But that's it. Thanks so much for your time and your attention. My name is Ozzy Mihangos, and I'll catch you in the next one.